Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. I'm Dominique LeRae and this is going to be a cool week. I have several things planned, but for now, um, I'm getting ready to go meet my friends. So come along with us for a trip to the CDC Museum and I'm so excited. This is going to be a cool experience because we'll get to see the historical and modern day public health exhibits that they have on display. Honestly, I didn't know that this existed up until a few months ago. <laughs> But if you ever want to go, it's located right here in Atlanta, Georgia, specifically in North Druid Hills area at the Center for Disease Control Headquarters. It's free and open to the public during normal business hours, which is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I linked the website in the description box below if you want more information. So I'll meet you there. Okay, so I'm back home and it was actually really interesting and a lot more detailed than what I expected. We spent every bit of two and a half hours there today. So I just have a few thoughts on my experience and I feel like it was a really good reminder of how far we've come with public health research and healthcare today compared to when the CDC started 75 years ago. There were literally paper trail notebooks on display from back in the day for how they carried out tracking cases and disease outbreaks whereas now we have standardized database systems for that so yeah it was it was really eye-opening especially seeing some of the older laboratory equipment the microscopes and the safety hood that they had and some of the old chemistry glassware kind of made me feel spoiled to be able to work with modern day technology in the laboratory today and overall it made me feel really inspired to continue on in my path within the microbiology field as I am exploring opportunities that are outside of the hospitals for the future. So yeah, that was again, very interesting. If you ever have a chance to go, definitely go. They actually redo the exhibits, I think seasonally. So um, they're getting ready to put up a new exhibition starting in October. So yeah, if you ever have the chance to go, definitely take a time to go to the CDC Museum. Okay, so it's Saturday morning and I'm getting ready to attend an annual conference for my state's chapter of American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science. Registration begins at 8 a.m. So I'm going to have to drive to Augusta. That's why I got up early this morning. So hopefully I can get there by 8.45. I just didn't feel like driving after work. <laughs> I don't really know what outfit <laughs> I should have worn, but the attire is business casual. So let me show you what I'm wearing. So I just got on a tank top because it's really hot outside with some cute pants, my little purse, and my sandals. I just picked up a cute little outfit from H&M, but if I want to be on time, I'm going to have to leave soon. So I will talk to y'all when I get there. Okay, so 
I just arrived and I kind of spent my drive thinking and reflecting on where I'm at now and where I want to be in the future with my career. Just because my hopes for today is that I learn new information, of course, but also I want to get out of my comfort zone and try to begin networking with people. That was a big piece of advice that I received earlier this year was that the best way to find new opportunities is to network. Yeah, I'm excited, but I'm a little nervous just because I'm attending the conference alone and I'm a huge introvert. Like it's very easy for me to sit here and talk to the camera, but put me in a room full of mingling people and I kind of just go mute. So today will be the conscious effort to speak. <laughs> I'm gonna go get registered and get breakfast before the keynote begins, so I will talk to you guys later. Okay, so the conference just ended and I wanted to get my thoughts out before I went home, if that makes sense. So yeah, I didn't get too much footage just because it didn't feel like the time and place <laughs> to be vlogging a lot. So I just had those few clips that I showed, but it was interesting and I took notes so that I could talk to you guys about what I learned today. There were six presentations to attend. The first one, I'm reading my notes, so. The first one which I enjoyed the most was the lessons you will learn as an MLS program director. And the interesting part for me was that, okay, I do want to go into higher education one day to be a lecturer at some point, but before the presentation, I never thought of myself as a program director. And I also didn't think about the transition to be an educator. So the presentation was about the learning curves that she overcame within her first year, few years as a director. Tips were things like time management and self-care, identifying your leadership styles, and just the overall decision-making that will affect your program, plus the students that are also impacted as well. So it was interesting because I feel like the presentation allowed me to see professors from a different perspective. They experienced stress, they experienced COVID, and all the changes that came with it, just like we did as a student. So it made me see a different side of things but yeah there were six presentations the others were about kidney disease challenges hemoglobinopathies and laboratory analytics personal development and mtbi testing which was really cool just because it can detect external brain injury um all the topics were either new things to me or like a refresher from school and just kind of updating on where we are with diagnostics nothing about microbiology or blood bank though <laughs> which are my areas of interest in MLS, but that's okay. Lunch was provided by, she's just staring at me. <laughs> Lunch was provided by a food truck called The Bearded Chef. And I think they're based out of Augusta. And I got a Hawaiian smash burger at a, I don't know why I thought it was okay to be eat messy food at a conference, but it was delicious. I'm not gonna lie. It was really nice. And like I told y'all earlier, my goal was to talk to more people that I didn't previously know in the field. And so I did get to network a lot more than I thought. <laughs> and I talked to three people that are currently or formerly educators in medical lab science. Because I mentioned that earlier, like that's also something that I do want to do one day, um, like far in the future, no time soon. There were vendors around, and so I got some goodies from tabling. So I wanted to share them with you guys to show you just what I got. First thing is my new Media Lab tote bag. And this is the company that created Lab CE, which is like a compliance for education credits, but also um, the exam simulators that we can use to prepare for the certification testing. What I thought was interesting, we know about the exam simulator and about the CE credits, but I didn't know about some of their other products. Like they had, and this isn't a small store, like I just thought it was cool. When I talked to the table, like they mentioned that there was case simulators because I do precept now. Sometimes it's hard to gauge if the student's really understanding what I'm showing them. So they mentioned that there's case simulators that walks them through like 25 different case studies for microbiology, which I thought was cool. So maybe I can recommend that to students if they don't feel comfortable with microbiology. I don't know if it's showing, but they have education software. 
um, the main thing I thought was cool is the case simulator for microbiology. And then they said that the case simulator also covered white blood cell differentials, body fluid differentials, urinalysis, bacteriology, blood cell morphology. So it's more than just micro, but for my purposes, I thought it was cool for microbiology. This was more about the microbiology case simulator. It starts with bacteriology and then it is overall like the most common organisms that you would be identifying if you worked in clinical microbiology. So I thought that was cool. It's not really my place to do that assessment a little bit, but if I'm having to sign off that a student understands, I want to make sure that they actually truly understand things. <laughs> And so when it comes to precepting, we're there to show them the day-to-day -day responsibility so that it can make the classroom information click with the real world knowledge, if that makes sense. But it's hard to do that if they don't understand like the basics or they don't remember the basics if they took the class a long time ago. So I thought that the microbiology case simulator would be really cool um, if students just really wanted to learn to have a better understanding for working up um, different culture types. I don't really do electrophoresis. I've never had to do that in a work setting. So the last time I've really looked at electrophoresis stuff was school. And so there was a company called Sebia. They made these cool rulers that show how to read the different points of electrophoresis. Looking for hemoglobin A, hemoglobin S, D, C. The other side was um, F, E, A2. So that was cool. Because this is definitely something that I didn't commit to memory <laughs> once I learned it in school. If I ever need this in the future, I have a resource. And they also gave a notepad that I thought was really cute. With the immunoglobulins at the bottom. And I'll definitely use this. And then I think the rest of the stuff I got was just like pens. Got some magnet from Pipette Solutions. Which they're like a calibrating company here in Atlanta. So that was kind of cool. And then I got a marker from Sebia, like a Sharpie type marker, and a pen from Pipette Solutions. And then, I don't know what this was, but I just grabbed it. Um, I think this is a highlighter. Yes, this is a highlighter from Sebia. So, got some really cool stuff, useful stuff. This one was a company that they specialize in doing blood testing for cancer markers. And I thought that was interesting because they're using next-gen sequencing, which I know I was I was telling the lady, like, I'm familiar with this from microbiology standpoint. I didn't know it was done to the full extent in molecular diagnostics, so I thought that was really cool. This is how the test works. And this is a long list of all of the markers that they're testing for. I don't know if you can see the whole thing. So it was really cool to, to know that you could work with your doctor on these possible cancer types thanks to NGS and this company. <laughs> Yeah, these are just business cards. Like I said, it was nice to be reminded that this is a science and there's so much up and coming research being done and conducted to help progress our field in a really nice direction. So I had a positive experience coming to this conference. And I think I'll probably be trying to attend more in the future. So that was just basically a summary of like a recap of today, but we still have one more place to go and we are heading to Fernbank Science Museum tomorrow. So I'll see you then. I'm going to be spending the rest of the day studying for my two classes this semester because I'm taking a class in fundamentals of data science basically and then a database management class for SQL which I bought this book thinking that it was going to help me but my class is based in MySQL. <laughs> it's a slightly different uh, query language to learn but I like the way that this book speaks to me versus the way that my professor speaks to me so hopefully that you know once I get through in the groove of the semester this book will be really helpful for me but yeah i'm going to talk to you guys later <laughs> See you tomorrow.